So let's um, let's let's hope that the camera works. Does the camera work? Is the camera? Are we moving? <laughs> Does the sound work? We're just checking everything. This is the new meme. Um, hello and welcome to Foxhole's bi-weekly dev stream. My name is Matt. I'm with HB and Mark. How's everybody doing? It's been a month. Oh well, no, it's been two weeks. No, it's been two weeks, but I mean, it's been a month. Since, the last, the last month. Since like update twenty. Since update twenty six. Yeah. It's oh. Like it feels like a. It, it, it was sort of this big climax moment, um, and now we're sort of in the aftermath. You know, it's kind of like the end game, right? Like it was like the snap. Are we yeah. the end game now? No, we're past the end game, and mm -hmm. then now we're like, it's like, how do you make another Marvel movie after the? after uh, the end game like so, so sort of like having to you lean heavily on it i don't know if you guys seen uh new spider-man Spider one i saw it on uh it's pretty it's, it's, I, I saw it on the weekend it was good it was a lot of fun yeah. but uh, this is now a spider-man review cast it leans heavily on the on the, <laughs> that's what we should do right. so, but it's sort of like how do you go from like because it was at least for us like we no spoilers in chat we really had to rally to um get that update out and i think that's one thing that um I did want to. I did want to like communicate with you guys um, a little bit about that because it's it, you guys have a different perspective, um, and I want to make sure that you guys understood our our uh, perspective is that when we come off of these updates, we're extremely tired, um, <laughs> mentally and physically, and we we read all the feedback, and all we want to do is like go in and fix everything, fix right. Um, but, but then we have to, what we've learned over the long run and I've learned personally, and, and I want to make sure that, that, that this translates over to the team, that it's important that as much as we want to just go in and fix everything, we need to rest as well, because this is a long game that we're playing. And like we've said many times th since three years ago that we're here to stay mm -hmm. and, and we're not, you know, uh, game's not going to be done for a long time and, and we're, and we're, you know, Foxwell has a long life ahead, and it, I'm gonna not sound like a broken record, but it's it's um it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, and we have to make sure that in this marathon, after the big updates, we have a moment to rest. So sometimes when it seems like oh, we understand your perspective, you play the game, there's things that you immediately sense need to be changed, um, and we totally hear you on that, and and we know how it feels, like you know for us like we play games ourselves and and we experience the same thing you experience like for our favorite games we'll play an update and be like oh man i wish they had changed this and then you know but then uh, we sort of see the other side of the perspective where it's like we're resting after like this crazy 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 period right mm -hmm. um and but we're gonna get back into it and we are getting back into it but um at the same time it is nice to to sort of be able to rest, to let people on the team um, have their vacation. I know a couple of people are going on vacation um, over the summer. Uh, Not over the whole summer, but at various points throughout the summer, they're taking like a week off or something. Um, and I think it's very important. I think it's very important. Right? Mark, I forgot to tell you, I'm going to need the rest of the summer off. <laughs> are we doing the, the three month retreat? Sure. But that, means, retreat? that means that I'm doing all the maps then, Matt. Um, and I'm going to I'll just uh, fix them when I get back. It's fine. I'm going to make uh, um, all, all all the maps that you didn't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> just everything that I argued yeah. against. Uh, um, but anyways, yeah. Cool, cool. Long long story short is that we're getting back into it, but at the same time, it's you know we're taking a moment to catch our breaths before we uh, dive into some really cool stuff. And I honestly believe that like um, this winter update that is ahead of us and all the stuff we're going to do throughout fall is going to be even bigger than update 26 but you know it's we're still at spider-man uh, far from home so let's not get too <laughs> excited yet about the next the next like avengers movie right yeah are we, a, are, we even at, are we even at spider-man yet uh dlc for foxhole is that what you're saying <laughs> cool it's foxhole far from home um, foxhole is now part of marvel universe cool Let's move so on. That, so that's what happened. It was just Thanos the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, let's move on to uh, let's move on to the dev stream. Uh, if we got nothing else going cool. on. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna start with the community highlights as usual. Uh, community highlights for everybody that don't know. It's uh, every two weeks, usually a little bit after the blo the the blog. 
uh, the, the dev stream, uh, KFC puts up a blog post with all the cool things that our community has done. And in the dev stream today, I'm just doing a little bit of a preview of what it is to come. Cool. So first thing that is, uh, I thought it was really cool, uh, Rickery, uh, Rickery has been doing some art. And uh, I thought that this was really neat that I uh, did for like both the sides, both Colonials and uh, Wardens. That's rare. Yeah, yeah, we usually have people that are really biased, biased on uh, on, on one side or, side or another, right? So that's this why is, this is like a this is like a neutral art. <laughs> yeah, that's the neutrals. That's why I thought that this was really really cool to, to to include because you don't you don't see both sides at the same and and not only that but depicted in a an interesting way like both no not to be demeaning to any one side, right? And like mm. actually being like like depicted like in a cool way. I I, I really love this. I love this concept. It's kind of like two different teams in a sports game or something like that, like facing very, against each other. It's very lighthearted. Um, um, you know, like they're not in military poses. They are, as you say, more sports team yeah. type of poses. <laughs> and I love the mustaches. And I, lo I love the person uh, the personality yeah. that he's giving to uh, like all the characters. Well, like, why do the Wardens have mustaches, but the Colonials don't? I mean, That's two, only question. two of them have. <laughs> And the guy in the gas mask. I bet he has a mustache. Uh, I guarantee it. Is it a guy? Let's ask. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, we also have... This is really cool. Uh, so, Crimson Skies. Uh, I, know you, I don't know if you guys remember, but he was one of the finalists on our art contest. Uh, the, the picture on the left is what uh, was one of the finalists on our uh, art contest. Uh, and then recently, uh, these two kind of like follow-up pictures uh, uh, were made. Oh. Were they made or was it all together? No, I think this, it, this was after. Oh. You can see that the color grading is different, right? Because I was going to say, if you had these in your back pocket and you didn't submit yeah, them, so like, what the fuck? Like, why didn't you include submit these? Submit both of the three of yeah. them. I agree. I 100% agree. Because that could have said a little bit, an even more interesting story. Yeah, than it was. absolutely. But uh, I think this was done. These were uh, done recently, uh, in a like I think it's this week or the week prior or something like that. I thought it was really cool. It's kind of like a follow up for for the original submission. I thought it was quite neat. You know, seeing this, uh, I'm not asking for it, but I'm just saying that 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 <laughs> um, seeing this makes me want to see like a like a short film or something at some point. Yeah, that'd be the next dude, level. Dude, that would be the next level. <laughs> yeah, that like you know, even like a five minute, even like a two three minute thing, right? Like mm -hmm. a YouTube video. Yeah, like a really high quality production live action. Even it's something like something like what the Warp Zone does. Or like there's some quality for it, but you can still see that it's amateur. That would be like amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as we can like, it's, it's gonna sound cheesy, but as long as we can sort of see like, see like the passion in it, right? It's, yeah, it, it's really all we care about. So, um, yeah, no, cool. it's fantastic. Uh, next thing, the next thing is, uh, oh, this is quite interesting. Um, as you guys know, Press Corp is doing like just amazing work with uh, all kinds of audio media in general. Um, and then there's, they're doing this, uh, not even a dramatic read of uh, a story. It is a play, it is like a radio play. Uh, the, first, the first episode is what is right there in the, in the bottom. Uh, you, you can see the link up here for the first episode. Oh, and let's go back. <laughs> Sorry. And you can see the link up here for the first episode. Uh, and, the, and they are doing this dramatic reading of, of this play called This Damn Blizzard. Uh, and they are looking for people that are into voice acting to be part of it. This, again, this is all fan-made. We, we, we have no, no hand in this. And I, I think this, they... They're just doing this because it's interesting. Uh, so talk to Commander Rod or Potato for more information. Uh, I know that they particularly mentioned that they were looking for female voices mm. to be part of this read. You guys can see the first part of it, uh, this damn blizzard, already on YouTube. Um, uh, it's really good. It's really this good. This is something that um, I saw it like a week ago. I think... Uh, Crazy, uh, maybe more than a week ago, and Crazy for Flying Chicken posted it. And I listened to it about like four times. And I think, like, I'm not even joking. Like, this is one of those things where it's like, damn, if only this was in the art contest, because it, 
it would have probably won like hands down. It, it is it's, like extremely good. I, I can play a little bit of it. I think we have audio from here, right? Because it's only audio and we it's can, not copyrighted. We, we, we can try. It's not copyrighted because it's just them reading. Mm. Uh, so I'll try playing, see what happens. It'll be up to that computer. Doesn't look like anything's piping through. No. No. No audio. No. Ah. That computer is. And maybe it's not. See, it resets happen. every single time we do a stream. This uh, is the only sorry about that. Is there any way to it? post the link in chat so everyone can uh, click on it? The link, the link in chat is the one on the top left corner mm. of the screen. Uh, we would have to like copy that that crazy amount of maybe crazy fine chicken if he's watching he can post it or someone else but if not yeah you KFC can, can take a look at it after. yeah so yeah. they're looking for they're looking for female voices i think they need two particular i think they still have <laughs> two spots to fill in this uh of four female voices on the this damn blizzard uh and like it really is top-notch quality go check out the first episode or the first part of it it's mind-blowing how good it is and really 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 good uh anyway well let's uh and the last thing that i wanted to uh that i wanted to talk about it's um actually this was a re request from other people in the team and they they told me to uh showcase uh low-tech gaming because mm. i know that we talk about like we like we have some People that are always streaming and creating content, like obviously I saw Bear is a big name mm. Uh, mm. on the community. But Low Tech Gaming has actually been doing a, quite a lot of uh, Foxhole uh, for a very long time. Actually. For a very very yeah. long time, and I, I don't think sometimes that we 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 showcase their uh, their content enough. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to do a shout out to Low Tech Gaming. Uh, if you guys have a chance to check out uh, uh, his channel. Yeah, there's there's been some really great content. Um, uh, there was some great coverage back um, during the Jade Jade Cove crisis. Uh, there was a great video on that. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's been a lot there's been a lot of like beach landing videos. Um, mm -hmm. and, yeah, I think his most viewed video yeah. is like the D, this uh, the one that I put on the left, the yeah. D Day foxhole. I actually uh, uh, myself and Phil uh, had a the honor of playing with him last week or i think it was last week but it was war 30 um when we were pushing the weather halls mm -hmm. um, and it's always funny because um i'm sure players at least some will 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 be surprised when they see us in game but for us we feel like um surprised and uh and um, uh, I guess like starstruck is a strong word, but like a uh, um, we get really excited when we, we get really excited when we see when we see that I saw bearing game when when we see like uh, uh, when we see a press court um, or or like uh, uh, oh I loved running into uh, in low tech gaming like uh, like we, a marine. <laughs> yeah exactly I like, loved running into him we it's feel so like fun. we're we're running into like these special people and it's exciting it actually makes me want to stay and play more um, yeah. And like, just just to share a bit about like playing two weeks ago, it was it it, it was certainly fun um, playing with you, low tech gaming. So yeah, no. So I don't know if he noticed me. Maybe he didn't. Uh, <laughs> so they, nobody cares about us. <laughs> nobody like, cares. Yeah, so like yeah. they know that we are terrible at our game, except for a very very few people yeah. in the office. Like not me, me not included. Yeah. Uh, I think Jeremiah is up there with probably the top. I would say yeah, no, Jeremiah 10. for sure plays extremely well. Well, it's also he's the, he plays the most in also. terms <laughs> of the number of hours. I, I'd reckon he's he, he's probably in like the top 20, 30 people. Oh, all, yeah. all time in Foxhole, most number of hours logged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. But anyway, uh, if you guys have a chance again to uh, check out Low Tech Gaming's channel, he does post other uh, other videos about other games as well. Also, really cool videos, by the way. But he does post a shit ton of uh, uh, Foxhole content, and it's really, really nice. Done. It has been doing for a while, and I just wanted to showcase him a little bit. Anyway, so this is it for the, the community highlight snippets. Uh, we're gonna go back to development update, and if if you if you wanna if if you guys have stuff that you wanna see showcase on our on the community highlights blog post send it to kfc we try to scour like our discord we try to make sure that we check everything but every once in a while something might 
slip past us. So if you think that something's really cool that you would like to see there and for some reason it hasn't been, uh, talk to us uh, and continue making stuff. It's amazing. Cool. Let's get on with the development updates. Development. Um, yeah, so we're um, slowly closing in on a, um, a spec for update 27, right? Um, and we've been listening to um, some of the feedback and there's also been um, some sort of uh, features that aren't um, that, that we've been looking for these pockets of time to work on, like improving some of the communication tools um, and we're, that's sort of the, the, the theme of this update is, mm -hmm. is, is sort of also fixing bugs, right? Sort of, um, following up on the aftermath of update 26 and also working on some of these, um, things on our, that's have been on our side plate for like a while is sort of the, the theme of this next update. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and to sort of touch on the roadmap again, um, we are moving into this July update. Um, which is still going to continue on building on some of the logic features. And then the August update is also going to be um, um, wrapping up some of the logic update um, revamp stuff from update uh, 26. And then we'll begin talking about um, the next uh, big, big, um, big set of changes. Um, and I'll, I'll hold back from talking about that for now. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad yeah. the first September. Spider-Man Far From Home, right? Yeah. That's where we're at. It's uh, too bad the first September update couldn't be update 30. <laughs> that would have been really good timing. Yeah, the numbers don't really always matter. I think update 20 was like perfect. perfect yeah. yeah. And then we end up like... Um, 29 is a good number. So uh, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, we're still honing in on that final spec, but... Um, Obviously, we talked about the resource containers, and that's to remove some of the awkwardness and last-minute um, uh, changes that went, went into the sub shipping containers to support resources. Um, that was a sort of this like funny last-minute player feedback type things where um, everybody told us at the very last minute, and this is when like we were past the point of being comfortable with changes. Mm -hmm. Everyone was like. No, 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 you have to allow shipping containers to um, hold uh, resources. And I decided, you know what, it's a high risk maneuver, but everyone's calling for it. Let's just do it. So we have to put in a whole bunch of like janky hacks to make that work. And we're sort of um, going back to like, undo that and doing it properly with the resource containers, mm -hmm. right? Um, operation stockpile, we discussed it last time. And this is an interesting one because this is um, something that is both a feature and a learning tool um, for us. We, we, we want to learn um, to see what happens if, if we provide a tool that allows players to do a little bit more preparation than usual. Um, so I wouldn't see this, this particular feature as like a, oh, this is this big thing that we're, that we're fully like committed to, but it's, it, it's more of like, let's learn, use it as a learning tool. Let's, let's see what happens when we allow players to um, reserve certain uh, equipment until a mm -hmm. certain time. And, and, you know, it may work out, it might not work out, but, but I, I think we'll all learn a lot from yeah, it. Yeah, I right? think we have to at least try, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the map posts, we talked about it in the dev blog last week. That's a really great feature um, that Rohan's working on right now, which is, which is sort of a consolidation and revamp of the map uh, marker sl slash map callout system that is sort of like the, the, the next version of that, um, which is largely based on our observation of seeing what players are already trying to do. They're, they're trying to shout in the world um, and wanting to make that, that shout a bit more like, uh, a bit more persistent and allow other players to like, interact with that, with, with that message or shout or post or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. And, and then, you know, that's another sort of, um, uh, learning experience, but I, I'm really excited about that one. I, I, I personally have a feeling that this one seems like a small one that everyone's just sort of like, yeah, whatever. Um, but it might, I, it might I, roll I, out to be a, a bigger thing. Than yeah. That. I, I thinking that it's, it's going to be, um, quite helpful. Um, quality of life and bug fixes. So there's a long list here. There's a couple of small things I did want to mention. Um, one is ladder robustness. So this is one of the things that 
There's a little story here with the ladders. We implemented it a long time ago when um, when it was last minute, like sort of not planned uh, feature. When I think Stefan and Matt, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, but but you guys wanted to put ladders onto something. It was for uh, water operation stuff. So like it was meant to go on like shipyards and, and yeah. docks and stuff. And and. Um, and we slapped it together and it worked for that use case. But then everyone else started on the team, started using this and looking at it and being like, hey, ladders, we, we totally have ladders. Let's just like use them everywhere. When they weren't properly um, implemented, they were implemented <laughs> to be as flexible for all these different scenarios. So what ended up happening was there was a lot of bugs and they didn't always work correctly. You'd like fall off them and, and like drown for no reason. and other weird uh, quirks so we've gone back to the drawing board and um and uh added the proper the necessary changes to to increase its flexibility so that it can support these other use cases so hopefully that'll be more robust moving forward um map map centering um you know this is one of those really small things but i also want to talk about these these uh small things is it's just being able to like um to have a key that, that you can map to uh, recenter the map um, when you push it and, and also having the, uh, um, it recenter when you close the map and like reopen it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are, these are small things that, that sort of help smooth over uh, the user experience. Um, and then game balance, this is a big one. Um, and we're still reviewing some of the stuff. So, um, it, this isn't a, this isn't going to be like an exhaustive list, but some of the things that we are um, reviewing, uh, we've sort of taken a lot of the feedback and and uh, mapped out a list of things that we are reviewing. There is more than this, um, but uh, one is that the armored cars um, shouldn't require uh, petrol, um, and this is uh, this is probably the the one thing that we're pretty certain that we're going to change, right? 99% mm -hmm. uh, certain we're going to change this. It's part of this larger sort of theme of, oh, X content is not worth it when you're in a late game. You're going to see a bunch of these types of things here. Um, motorcycles are are useless. Like, they're, they're, they're sort of, um, they're trade-offs in, 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 in speed and, and, and feel and so on and so forth. It's just, um, we've seen some feedback about that just not being worth it in comparison to some of like the other fat, like fast moving vehicles. Um, so that's something we're going to be taking a look at. Um, light tanks aren't worth their cost. Um, and we've seen a lot of, um, mentions on light tanks. What's the point in, in, in uh, using light tanks? Um, you know, when like battle tanks are, are there and we've seen this in fact skipped over in the tech tree. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's another, that's another uh, one that we're going to take a look at. Um, howitzers are useless in the end game. We've heard about how um, howitzers might to some degree be useful in the early game, maybe in the mid game, but um, we've heard the argument that it's difficult to justify the cost of the shells when you're dealing, when you can um, use them on tanks. Mm -hmm. So that that's something that we're also uh, reviewing and um, RPGs versus light tank trade-off. There's sort of been this uh, RPG meta um, that has been emerging because they don't require sulfur. Mm -hmm. um, so they're being used heavily once they're available. And we've heard the argument that, um, you know, the, they're sort of, it's not fair that, that they're so easy to produce, but yet um, light tanks are roughly the same strength as them. Um, and, and light tanks require sulfur. Right, so this is sort of one of the another one of the trade offs that we're taking a look at. Um, gun turrets and gun nests are too easy to, to spam, um, and so they don't require um, components; they require salvage only. And we've this is something that we're taking a look at. Not necessarily sure if changes are going to come yet, but but it's definitely something we've um, we've we've heard that we are looking at. And I think that's it. I don't want to press forward HP because I always make that mistake. So <laughs> I'd rather do the opposite mistake of missing something and then yeah. going for it. But um, just to be clear though, like I've said this a million times, um, but this isn't all we're looking at. We know that you guys have talked a lot about like 
things like refined ratios and the economy in general and scarcity. Yep. Yep. Um, this isn't this isn't us saying we're ignoring all that and we're only going to do this. But these are the things that we feel like we're closer to being able to like action mm-hmm. than um, the other stuff. But the other stuff where you know we're having conversations all the time about them. Um, and in fact, I just like um, talked to Crazy Flying Chicken last night extensively about this. So it's it's. It's um it's on our plate. Um, we're looking at a bunch of stuff. Uh, so that's sort of a gives an early picture of what update twenty seven might look like, and um, there'll be more to come for the nice with that. Moving on. Uh, so this is um, more of an exploratory thing that we've been um, talking about, planning for, um, but it's not quite ready yet. This is uh, player grouping tools. And we're exploring a new concept um, that we're, for now, calling it the regiment system. Um, and this is, this is like highly work in progress. So everything you see here might completely change, right? Just, just to be clear on that. And this is like, um, <laughs> communication grouping tools are hard. And we've, and we've tried a couple things in the game. Um, some of them have worked better than others. Uh, and we know that we just have to keep trying with with this with these things like player grouping because they require a lot of um, experimentation and we're but what we really want to do is is take a look at some of the stuff that we've um, sidestepped up till now and and see and see how well they might work and some of these things um, include like hierarchical um organization so we know that players have been asking for um the ability to in the dream version make um make a like a really really big group a regiment a really large regiment like a company and being able to break it down into like a hierarchy and and um being able to organize that in the way that they want to so this is something that in the past we've sort of sidestepped and said okay well like, um, we don't want to necessarily, like, provide those tools for you guys to, uh, to do. Or, or we sort of just thought about it for a very long time without having, having actioned it. But this is something that we're putting on the table, at least, now. We're, we're sort of saying, maybe we should take a look at this. Everyone's talking about it. Maybe we should take a look at it. Especially now that the game's world is so much bigger and there's a lot of players in this war... Um, and, and it's hard, it's, be, it's become harder than ever. We, we recognize this. It's mm-hmm. become harder than ever for like different types of players to work with other players, randoms with clan members, um, clan members from different, from different, from different like time zones and, 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 and so on and so forth. So this is us just, just, just saying that we're putting this on the table, mm-hmm. right? Um, you know, things like player driven ranks and permissions, the ultimate, like, version of this that we've sort of heard from the community is being able to say okay you're you're my you're my uh you you're my squad leader and then above you there's a platoon leader mm-hmm. and then above that there is a company and mm-hmm. and you being able to say okay you, you, i can talk to you but you can't like the people in this squad can't talk to the people above and those sorts of things you know again we're not sure yet exactly where it's going to land but this is the stuff that's on the table right um, large scale operation planning, being able to uh, plan a large scale operation that involves lots of vehicles, lots of equipment is something that we're taking a look at as well. Um, some of that we're experimenting with the operation stockpile, and 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 we're going to see how some of that plays out, and maybe um, maybe some of this is going to work into this um, into uh, the regiment system. Um, and you know customizations Whoa. obviously tags being able to um, rename your regiment to your clan and that having show up beside your name on the hud and everywhere your name appears um having a tag show up this this is something that we've heard so much about and um nothing's final yet of course but but this is something that is that's definitely on the table and that we're pretty adamant about doing um a little sooner rather than later right mm-hmm. um Colors, this is another thing that's, you know, again, going hand in hand with the tags. 
not saying this is going to come, <laughs> but we're taking a look at it. Um, and even things like banners, mm-hmm. uh, we're, we're, we're coming around to take a look at this stuff. And even if this doesn't all come at once, it, we're sort of, it's in the mix, right? It's in the conversation. For um, sure. And, and yeah, so this is, this is in part like us. I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, you guys are finally adding support for like clans. Um, this is, this is us taking some steps towards that direction. Yeah. And, um, it might not be final or even like full completure. Yeah, exactly. And because this is one of those features that we feel like we need to work closely, uh, with you guys on, I, I, I know I'm comfortable with talking about this sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's not going to be implemented right away, I, I, I feel like, or at least the whole thing, maybe parts of it will. Yeah. I feel like starting a conversation earlier rather than later um, in this case is... Well, particularly a on a social feature like this, which is mainly like for you guys to uh, be able to organize themselves. If we start with like a small implementation, it's much easier for you guys to like tell us back, okay, this is great, but exactly. we need more exactly. of this yes. specific. Like there's much more uh, focus uh, yeah. when, when, when you're... Uh, the feedback is more focused, yeah. so that helps a lot as well. Which is which is quite different from like a a content type feature yeah. where where you really need to make the whole thing before mm-hmm. it's there, right? But but it's gonna be kind of the ten steps. And one of the the ideas that we're experimenting with is is um, you can see it in this uh, screenshot here is um, showing which regiments are stationed at a town or a base and allowing players to request to join a regiment. Um, at the same time that um, a regiment leader um, can invite others to it. So the, the, the flow being sort of explored in, in the screenshot is like you're a random player, you go to a base, um, you're like, cool, I want to station myself at this base. Who else is stationed here, right? Um, maybe this uh, clan is, 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 is stationed here. Maybe I can ask them to, to join. join in, right? Yeah. Maybe they can use me and, and like, even if I'm not involved in, in sort of like the intricate planning, like maybe I can be involved in some way, be part of, be like part of their operation, right? I mean, the, the ultimate dream for us is if random players can be part of these really intricate type of operations. Well, and right? not only that, but I think that this also brings uh, the, uh, the, the opportunity for, uh, to, for random players, players that don't have clans and don't want to work with clans in particular, because one reason or another, to start their own operation, to start their own regiment, 100%, 100%, and yeah. then they become like the hub. Like uh, I've seen in other other games, uh, like in which, like oh yeah, there are clans and everything, but we have a, a, a pickup group. Absolutely, like uh, f- groups focus only on pickup players, right? Like like oh, they only do that. You only work with right. players that wanna like they're. They, they're not affiliated to one particular faction or another, and then they themselves organize. They, well, the guy that created it has the highest ar- hierarchy, and as long it's, it's, it's your own. You can do right. with that whatever you want. And the thing is, we already see this happening in the game now. Like, we see player operations is not used as much as we'd like, but I have seen them used. I've been part of them. Um, and random players are do a good job at grouping together um, yeah. if they have tools. Like, you'd be surprised. If it's a logical operation that yeah. makes sense for the other players to do, they actually yeah. do end up joining. I've seen beach landings being done which is by yes. random players, which is I don't insane, even know how that right? happens. You know, like, I, I've seen it done before. It's, it, it's not common, but yeah. I have seen it done. Um, but this is just us letting you guys know that, um, you know... We're looking into this. We're heading in this direction, and... and, um, and yeah, we hope to continue the conversation on it. Cool. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Ah, Matt, you can talk about this. <laughs> I haven't really been talking. You've been talking a lot. Yes. Um, are there any bullet points on this? No. <laughs> Sorry. Did, did we not end up putting bullet I points? I was going to put it in, but then I just figure maybe it's better if you freestyled it. All Take right. it away, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> so basically, this is a really early look at some of the changes that we're looking at making to some of the island maps. Um, there's not a ton because for the first time ever, we felt like they were actually working this last war. Not the last war, but because that one was too short, <laughs> but the one before <laughs> that. Um, but uh, there, we do think there are some big problems. And one of the big issues is um, uh, Godcrofts was not really all that interesting anymore. <laughs> um, it, uh, we kind of just slammed it in there, so we really want to do some extensive work on that. And the other thing is Orbreaker 
and the bridge into Fisherman's Row were just kind of, um, I don't know, boring. It, it not well, really. I think a lot of it, it, was... it didn't really. It was kind of linear and unused. Like a lot of Orbrick was just not worth using. Sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say that um, some of the changes we put in were very last minute. Um, that we just had to resolve some some corner cases. And the other point I want to make was that um, some of the stuff that we're trying to reverse is the the design decisions that were based on the port bases, mm-hmm. right? Like in God's Crop specifically, it was originally made, um, it was Fisherman's Row previously, and a lot of that was dictated by the port bases. Um, thank God port bases are gone. I'm excited about that. I just wanted to throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, like, and all these maps were designed with port, port bases in mind. Like in, our original, in the original design that we actually like sent out to players, the port bases were still marked. Like it, uh, it was just something that we had to, um, that we we had to kind of look, take a look at again. And on top of that, just as a little tease, like there's some stuff that obviously is not we haven't announced that's also sort of like involved in the decision making for this. And these are not final designs; these are just some exploratory designs that we like right now. Um, and obviously, anything here can change. But we just wanted to let you guys know that we're you know, we're working on some of the island stuff, trying to make things a little bit more interesting over there. Um, I think that's really all we have to talk about with this. Yeah. Right now. And you guys put some some thought into like oil rigs, but there's a lot more to think about mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think you're still Yeah, it's still on deck. me. All right. So if, as I talk, just hit the arrow button. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, what I teased this last week on Friday, I think. It's called uh, Chronicle of Ashes. And uh, essentially what it is, if you can go to the next bit... Um, is going to be uh, serialized official Foxhole stories. Um, and these will be stories that cannot be told in the Foxhole game. And now why the reason why we're doing this is because every single day, if I spend five seconds in the Foxhole official Discord, or I'm in chat, or uh, I'm, in, I'm in chat in the game, or I'm here on the stream, someone will yell at me, I want more lore. <laughs> every single day. Um, so this is a bit of a side project that I've been working on uh, that is going to be posted. It's going to be in a couple places, but one of the places is going to be posted is our blog, our online, on our website, sorry, online on our website. Um, but there may be some other avenues in the future uh, to consume this. So um, let's keep going. And um, so these are going to be small stakes, character, character-focused narratives. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. They're going to be set mostly outside of the known game world. Um, they will not uh, feature. You can you can keep going. They will not feature origin stories like like Callahan's origins or the <clears throat> breaching of the bulwark or these things that are sort of like intrinsic to the world. Um, we're not going to be doing Star Wars prequels um, ever. <laughs> That's not something we're interested in doing. So this is going to be like maybe they won't be set in the same country that the game takes place. Is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, these are designed to broaden the scope of the Foxhole universe. Um, and provide insight to stuff that doesn't really make sense to tell in, 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 the, in the world. We don't have a game that is set up to tell narrative stories or like sequential stories. It's, it doesn't make sense. It's very, very hard to do, so that's what this is going to be. Um, it won't be every week, but uh, if you go to the next one, so they're gonna be, uh, they are going to be weekly chapter installments until an episode is fully released, and then it will be... Uh, they will appear periodically. Uh, a new episode will appear periodically, and then we'll do weekly installments again until the episode is released. The first one is going to be called The Tower, and it is coming uh, late July, early August. Hopefully. Now that I've said it, it's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you have no choice. So uh, I have a question. Um, sure. You, you, you kind of answered it, but I just want to like, highlight it. Um, we said that we wouldn't really ever like just sort of tell these... Uh, like we we were dedicated to a certain form of storytelling, which is through the world, right? Yes. Um, why is this, why is this changed? And, and why do you feel like this can't be done in the game? Which I know you kind of somewhat answered, but I wanted to. Just yeah. So, so Foxhole is a game where a lot of the storytelling and the perspective of storytelling is done through the players as historians. Uh, they put together pieces um, uh, specifically that they find in game. Now, why I wanted to expand a little bit is because I think there's a lot of opportunities for really cool stuff in the Foxhole world that just won't happen in the game itself. 
Um, one of our big inspirations is, uh, you know, a lot of people play it in our office, uh, Mark, is Destiny. And a lot of the story of Destiny is told sort of, it's kind of told in Destiny, but it's kind of outside of Destiny as well. It's not really in the game. It's kind of like on the periphery. And I think um, this gives an opportunity to just get a glimpse into what some different aspects might be like, like everyday life. Um, like, you know, what it's like to be trained. Um, what, what life as a child is like. What life as like an old person is like. What other countries are doing. What is happening in the rest of the world. Because in Foxville, it takes place in one country. Uh, and, you know, barring like DLC or future content, we may never see more, <laughs> depending, you know, who knows. So I, um, for me, this was an opportunity to A, give people what they've asked for because they've asked for this like constantly <laughs> and, and B, expand the scope of the world in a way that uh, we, can't really, we can't really do in the game unless we sort of change some of our core philosophies, which I don't think we're going to do. So this is a little bit separate, but it's still like canonically like part of Foxhole. Nice. Does that answer your question? It does. I was asking cool. on the behalf of the community. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, look for, look for early July uh, or late July, early August for the first story. And that's, that's going to be it. Uh, you guys can start throwing down your questions and we'll start trying to answer them. Nice. So how will operations change in update 27? JJR Cup. How will operations change? Will um, they change right away? No. So I, I guess some de depends on what that question is, is directed at. Um, if you're talking about operation feature in the game right now, like the thing where you can go in and create an operation on the map, that's largely not going to change. Um, operation stockpiles, which is a different concept, will allow players to stockpile um, equipment and vehicles to be available at a specific time, right? So players will be able to um, build this operation stockpile um, and write, uh, specify a start time for the operation and um, a, a name and, um, or rather like a description, okay, like this is what we're, this is what we're trying to do um, at this time, right? Like, oh, we want to attack uh, Callan's Passage in 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, and then anybody, this will show up on the map so everyone can, can see that this is uh, where this is being prepared. Anybody can add um, equipment to it, but no one can remove anything on, until the start time. Um, and if you walk up to this, to this building, um, you can join it, right? And, um, and, and then you'll be able to see the number of players that have, that have joined in this operation. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a complement to the operations, not changing the way it is right now, at least. Yeah. It's another tool that they can use. Right. Um, and yeah, so, but in terms of like operations in, um, the, the core features of it is, is we're sort of wanting to take a look at the bigger picture with the regiments. Um, before we before we start changing operations, right? Cool. Um, Kevlar Kello asks, any plan changes to the tech tree system? <laughs> yeah, so um, I think uh, KFC talked about this on uh, Zero Dark, um, the the press core um, uh, stream last last Friday. Uh, and our goal is to drastically change the way the tech tree works um, in the future. And that can go many different ways. Um, Cause the thing we don't, there's a couple of things we don't like about it. It's incredibly linear. You just sort of, you know, look at your watch and be like, oh, it's, can, can we use like tanks yet? No, we gotta wait another three days before we can use tanks. Um, and it's also very magical. You just walk up to the town hall or previously it was the tech center, but it was just still this like weird building that was somehow linked between the port bases. They, they, they don't have planes, but they have Wi-Fi. They got Wi-Fi, right? It, 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 uh, they spread their research around. Yeah. Um, so we hate had, we don't like how it's, it's magical. And we also don't like how, um, uh, it's linear, um, and 
it's too abstract. It's not something, everything in Foxhole, what, what we believe in is that everything in Foxhole should be tangible. It should be something you can capture, you can steal it, you can build it, you can like destroy it. And it exists in a place in the world and you can go to it, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think whatever we do with it, it will be something along the lines of um, play, like player, we want to remove the linear aspect and replace it with more player player driven system, right? Um, where if players decide that tanks are something that are important in the beginning of the war, um, then we want to give them the capability, even if it's impractical, right, um, to be able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But you'll be trading off. It'd be something along the lines of like, um, okay, we want to do tanks, even if it's a stupid choice, right? But now um, we don't have any rifles. We don't have any basic medical supplies. We don't have any, you know, all this other really important stuff that you need to stay in the game at the beginning, right? But we want to allow players to do that if they want, right? Like, let's, let's if there's something we've learned about the update 26 is we got to stop holding players' hands, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, that's, and every time we do that, it's always in the right, it's always the right choice, right? We, we, if you want to go off in the corner of the world and build a bunch of, a bunch of like tech factories when it doesn't make sense, we should let you do that, right? And that's, and that's sort of, um, I hope that gives some insight into that. Um, long and short of it is that Tech tree will either be removed or drastically changed. Yeah, in the course of the near future. Not, not yeah. Yeah. sorry, I mean, sorry. Yeah. In the in the course of the future, not necessarily <laughs> yes. right now. Yeah. Not for update twenty six. Thanks for thanks for that correction. Yeah. It, it's no, it's not going to happen in update twenty seven. It's not going to happen in update twenty eight. Um, it's it, 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 it's going to be wrapped yeah. away beyond that. Yeah. Um, Minx two 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 asks: Any reason you guys choose chose to use Irish extensively in the lower place names? lore slash place names just because it is cool is completely fine. Um, well, for one, it's, uh, a lot of those is due to me. Um, it's, my, uh, it's my heritage. It's where my family comes from. I'm like so two, gen biased. two generations <laughs> removed. And it's something I, you know, <laughs> something I don't see a lot, especially in like fantasy, uh, sometimes in fantasy, especially if you're talking about like, you know, the old school like, like fairy stories and the creatures and stuff, but not just as like a kind of a cool theming, a lot of the time you get like, uh, especially for Western theming, uh, a lot of the time you get like Norse or like Greek mythology, which, you know, we did kind of lean a little bit into the Greek stuff, the Hellenistic stuff with the colonials. 100%. But, um, but I, I was, when I was thinking about how to like theme the, the Wardens, I was just like, like I've never seen some of this stuff before, especially in something uh, like this and that's really the reason I thought it it just kind of sounded original it sounded it's it's something that I have a passion about um, uh, Celtic history has been pretty erased a lot of it has been erased and a lot of it's really hard to find and so I like to kind of spotlight it whenever I have the opportunity and that's really the reason I uh, I want for Foxhole DLC or whatever it is I want to I want you to do Foxhole and the Wars of the jungles of South America because if you <laughs> yeah. think that Celtic history has been hit, yeah, have been destroyed, so no game so takes much. place on I mean, those places. Speaking of that, I, I I I think a lot of this is like not related to anything, right? But like, I think a lot of uh, Foxhole fans would want to see like a jungle warfare. That would be so <laughs> cool. But but that is a good point. That is something that you don't you don't get you you get like sort of the typical sort of like Aztec or something. But there's a lot more. Yeah, no, uh, not, not all South America is the same. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and not a all. A lot of it's no, been erased. And you know what? The, wor the worst part is, I'm sorry, this is a tangent. I know it's a tangent, <laughs> is that uh, a lot of it uh, ends up being like, oh, well, South America, let's talk about drug dealers. And <laughs> oh, yeah. No, totally. there's more to it. <laughs> Um, so, so I, yeah, so, so when I, when I look for stuff like that, I kind of look for stuff that like is really like out of place. Um, yeah. and, uh, kind of what, uh, to create interesting pairings and a lot of the lore and, and, and history of the world of fossil, actually, I've said this a few times, has literally nothing to do with world war two. Like the only thing that is inspired by world war two is like what the actual like equipment is. Everything else has no, <clears throat> I don't even care about world war two at that point. Um, I think it's more interesting. So, um, sorry, I, no, go I gotta ask you this, HB. So you're saying you don't like my game concept of uh, <laughs> um, the, the, the persistent, persistent world like drug lord game? 
I right. took it a little bit personally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say it took place in like South America. No, you actually did. Oh, did I? Yeah. Sorry. Right. It was very, it was very clear. Yeah. Just add Max. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, exactly. <laughs> um, Dex Deuce Deuces, I I think, um, asks more UI or versus less UI. How much of a priority is immersion? Less UI. Less UI. Uh, it, it's a tenant. It's a tenant. Like we try to minimize anything that would remind you they're in game. So that's why you don't see things like, oh, uh, like a glowing area on the on the floor saying click enter there, enter enter here, so you can activate this thing. Like we try to minimize that. Sometimes that it's challenging. For instance, we have a, I, we we know we have a problem with uh, when there's a lot of equipment on the floor, right? So if we need to add UI to, to, to solve a problem, we will definitely do it. But when you and it's a little bit different when you are in a menu, like if you're like you're you're, you're dealing with a with a building that has like several buttons, we're kind of like okay with that. In the middle of the gameplay of the, of the resource gathering of the combat and things like that we try to minimize the ui that you see and we like we like it that way and i think that's that has always been a focus of ours yep um i have a funny comment that i'd like to respond to i can't remember who asked it but um someone said if Okay, here it is. Uh, Tornix asks, if you wanted to prevent either of the factions from falling into the good and bad narrative, as you've said in the past, you shouldn't have named one of them colonials. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, the other ones are called wardens, and I, I just I, want you to I, think just, about that I just for want seconds. everybody to know that when they first, uh, when Matt first mentioned the names, like, that was, Jesus Christ, three years ago? I don't know how long ago. And I was like, really? Wardens? Colonials? This is... <laughs> This is not good. I guess both of them are bad. Both of them, <laughs> both of them have questionable histories. But I, you know, um, one of the things to 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 think about is like <laughs> neither 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 one of those words have like positive connotations. Uh, yeah. So I mean, and that was kind of on purpose. If you, people, if you don't remember your explanation, that that was like well, like. I think another important thing to note about that, um, and, and 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 we've talked about this so lot Matt is that um, just because one side isn't um, the bad guy right yeah doesn't mean they haven't done things that are bad it's very important right so, and uh, vice versa yeah and vice, and, versa, yeah. and vice versa like they may have done things that are bad but it's a gray area right like when people think about like like war wardens sometimes they think about like the fantasy term that's used for like we are the keepers of the forest the wardens of the wild like that like the of wardens thing. of the north yeah exactly <laughs> but like that's not the way that i was using the word so um I, I, another thing too is like when we originally started foxhole uh we picked these names based on very different contexts yeah um and the I don't even want to get into it because I don't want to color any of the opinions, but uh, they were very different contexts and we have, they, they sort of just caught on and people really kind of dug into them. So that's the, we actually had discussed changing them uh, a long time ago, um, but they kind of just stuck and, and they are army names. They're, you know, they're, they're, you I'm know, glad we didn't change it. I, I think yeah, it I think works and I, I think it's, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting and, and dark and kind of weird. And I, I like it. I just think like, I find it pretty funny, to be honest, when people are like, you know, rallying behind like, like you know, we are like wardens or we, we're like colonials, yeah. yeah. And it's sort of just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, the you're context is a little, but yeah, so it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. I think, I think it's interesting, but yeah, I, I see where you're coming from, but uh, the word warden is not to be used in like a positive connotation here either. Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, another question. Um, just kind of a fun one, Developy, Dev Developy. Have you considered implementing H E A P and shrapnel rocket shells? Ah, um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think that we are heading towards more uh, variability in all types of ammunition. We started with the tanks. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think probably the next thing on our plate is um, artillery ammo. Right. Um, it, 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 in terms of exploring different types of shells, that's probably the next one on the plate. And 
Um, I think artillery in general, we probably want to um, revamp. Not not like right away, but that's slowly moving up the list. And I think there's a reasonable, it's reasonable to expect some changes there um, in the fall update. But uh, I'm excited about artillery. There's a lot of artillery used in World War II. And I think the game can use more artillery if, if I... Um, if I had my way, which I'll force my way to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, pocket Warlock. Cool. The, I was like, wait, this name, Pocket wait, Warlock. Warlock? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. Um, I, yeah. It was just not written that way. Like a pocket Warlock. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are the current plans for Relic Vehicles? Uh, Where are the Relic Vehicles, Mark? Yeah, they're, um, they're gone. Right. And um, and I don't know, I, I mean, we like the concept, so we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, I think <laughs> I was going to make a really bad joke, but I won't. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I think they're I, I think they're gone for now. And and um, I don't know when, to be honest, I don't know when we're going to return to them. Um, yeah, I wish I had a better answer, but uh, the there's other fish to fry right now, and um, you know, for now they will be gone. For for in the development process, at least uh, the, the the relic vehicles were really interesting for us, particularly on the artist side, because it allowed allowed uh, the artists to to really go to town and create some like really really interesting different things that didn't really have to fit like in the meta game or anything like that and like do some some like variations that were interesting but as their use became more and more complicated i guess yeah we had to we we we, we ended up stepping back from that yeah i think the but i don't think i like honestly i don't think we're gonna like never reintroduce them back i think we will eventually in the future it's just that we have to find out like a good moment because they're really fun well the relics are 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 forever going to be part of the world um like the history and and the world uh so there's there's that right mm -hmm. um we just yeah i don't know i i wish i had a better answer but i just don't yeah. hopefully they come back i, I agree I, I i want to see them back i'm gonna ask one more uh rail crim uh dismantling friendly structures question mark any eta question mark what are your concerns? Question mark. Overbuilding and badly placed structures are a problem right now. Yeah, um, I think we'll probably revisit some of that when we revisit uh, structure building later this year. Um, that's always been a tough one because, you know, there's always going to be the other side of the argument. If some guy, some player goes around, places a bunch of structures in what seemingly is a bad location, um, then you end up with this problem of if you dismantle it. Who is the arbiter of who, what's who, at that location? Who right? is the arbiter and what is considered griefing? Yeah. In that case, what's considered not griefing um, is, is a very difficult, um, very difficult issues to resolve, right? Uh, implementing dismantling itself is not difficult. Technically, we can do it and it wouldn't even be that hard. It's more resolving. Um, the the social problems mm -hmm. that come with it right um yeah so well maybe it's something we just have to try at some point and watch it succeed or fail right mm -hmm. so there's that too okay well that's going to bring an end to our dev stream thank you guys again uh for tuning in and uh hearing all these announcements because i actually think we announced quite a bit today mark yeah i thought it was gonna be <laughs> a very was, light stream too. and it actually turned out to be a lot of stuff we talked about which is which is great mm -hmm. yeah well i remember yeah. coming into it we we're like what are we even talking about um yeah. cool okay so um hb take us away yeah uh, thank you very much for everybody that showed up if you're watching this on youtube uh catch us on every second tuesday at 2 p.m est twitch.tv slash uh foxhole game if you cannot watch us on, on Twitch, uh, we will try to answer some questions in the comments below. Uh, and if you can, join our Discord, the discord.gg slash foxhole, so that you can 
join the rest of the community, send things through the community highlights, and ask us questions personally because we are always there. That's it. Nothing else. Mark? Nope. No final thoughts? Nope. All right. Well, as always, stay foxy. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs>